morning, good day, good evening, depending on what time you are listening to us. We thank God for yet another day that the Lord has given us so that we may gather and listen to what he has to tell us this morning. So today we continue with what we've been reading uh, the whole of this week, right from Monday. And so I want to take you back to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3 uh, from verse 1 to verse uh, 9. And this is what it says. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without uh, love, unforgive, unforgiving, scandalous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of ungodliness but denying its power, having nothing to do with them. They are the kind of who warm their way into homes and gain control over weak-willed women who are loaded with down who are, who are loaded down with the sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires, always learning but never able to acknowledge the truth, just as jumbles and jambres opposed Moses. So also these men oppose the, oppose the truth, men of depraved minds, who as far as the faith is concerned, are rejected, but they will not get very far because, as in the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone. Let's pray together. Everlasting God, we thank you for giving us an opportunity to listen to you. Would you speak to us and use me as your vessel? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so this morning's, uh, today's topic is uh, lack of impact. So we have walked the journey as we walked through uh, this passage and we have been uh, listening to what the Lord has had to say. And today I want us to pay attention to verse 1, verse 2, and verse 3. And uh, in those three verses, there is one thing that I would want you to pay attention to. One of those things is that um, in verse 2, we, we see where Paul is writing to Timothy and he's telling Timothy that in the last days, there will be people who will love themselves. There is nothing wrong with loving uh, oneself, but the problem here that Paul is trying to, addre to, adle to address is that in those last days, there will be people who will love themselves more than other people, more than loving God. And so those people, you know, there is no way that uh, you will love yourself and you fail to be uh, selfish. So loving themselves here, what Paul is addressing is that uh, what he means is that in the last days, there will be selfish uh, people. We get that from verse 2, people who will love themselves. So loving themselves goes together with selfishness. So selfish people, one thing that I would want you to notice is that selfish people are miserable because they are lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. So in the last days, and those last days are these days. So in the last days you'll encounter, you'll find people who love themselves so much so that they do not have space for other people and, they, and, and neither do they love, have space for God. And so they love themselves. They are selfish. They don't care about what is happening around them. And so uh, uh, one thing that, I, that uh, Paul is trying to tell us is that these people who love themselves are proud. They will be proud people. They, you know, they are proud of how they look. They are proud of what they have achieved. They are proud of their life. They are proud of uh, doing good. And, uh, and secondly, in those three verses, we notice where Paul is telling Timothy that they will also be boastful. They will want 
anybody who cares to listen to them to know and to hear how special they are and to hear how uh, hardworking they are, which is okay. But the point here is that they are selfish uh, so much so that they do not have space to acknowledge uh, the faithfulness of God in their lives. They are so selfish such that they don't see how God has... Um, you know, the, the ability of God who has made them to achieve what they have achieved. They will be ungrateful people because remember they are, they are selfish and, and uh, first of all they are uh, there are people who love themselves so much such that they do not have space for any other person and so they are selfish and the people who are selfish they are lovers of pleasure they are lovers of, uh, of, uh, of, of you know things to do with this world and so when that happens then they will be boastful they will be proud people then those kind of people are ungrateful they are ungrateful of other people. They don't appreciate what other, what other people do. They don't appreciate what God has done in their lives. For them, it is uh, for them. They see themselves, and they believe that if it were not for them, they would not have uh, uh, achieved what they have. They believe that if it were not for themselves, they would not be. You know, they, they, they see their effort, they see their achievement, and so they are not grateful to God, they are not grateful to other people. They forget that everything they have and who they are and the far they have gone has been because of the presence of God in their lives. And so uh, Paul tells them, Paul tells Timothy that if those people will be conceited. They will be conceited. And uh, uh, when you look uh, closely, you will see all those things in from verse 1 uh, to verse 3. Paul will give a list of, you know, I mean, he describes how those people will look like, people who are, uh, uh, are the type that love themselves. And so they will be conceited. There will be people who are excessively, excessively proud of themselves. In other words, the modern word today for to describe what Paul is saying here is narcissistic. There will be uh, people who are narcissistic, people who are, who, you know, care about themselves. They no longer care about any other thing any other person around them. They don't care about their family. They don't care about uh, the community. And you know, they, they are excessively proud of themselves. And so these people, uh, the type that Paul has described in these verses are greed people, the spirit behind them. And uh, what makes them to excessively become so proud of themselves, what makes them to be boastful, what makes them to be proud, what makes them to love themselves is because they, 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 they are being driven by the spirit of, uh, of, of greed. And so uh, when you look at the book of Acts chapter 5, there is a story there about a couple whose name was Ananiah and Sapphira. So this couple, uh, to, to cut the, the long story short, is that they sold their land. And the, the reason why they had sold that land is because they wanted to give the money for their kingdom. And instead of giving the whole lot, because they made everything to everybody to believe that they were going to give the whole lot of money, while we came to learn that they had hidden some, they had kept the sum for themselves. So those that couple lacked integrity. They pretended to be a couple of integrity while they were not. They were hypocrites. That couple was a hypocrite. They were doing it for a, a show of. They were not doing it wholeheartedly. They were not serving God wholeheartedly. The, that couple is an example of people who love creation more than creator. You know, they wanted to impress everybody. They wanted everybody to see that they can also do the same. And so they were being, they were selfish because they were being led by greed. And so that couple is an example of what Paul is describing in our today's passage. And so we who are, are listening to this uh, today, what is the Lord telling us? So he's giving us, he's using Paul to give us example of what will happen and, and that is what we already see in our today's generation. That is what we see in today's society. We see people who are full of pride. 
people who are boastful, narcissism, uh, you know, today we know very many people, that, that, you know, the percentage of people who are narcissistic is increasing every day. People who are excessively proud and full of themselves, people who no longer acknowledge that uh, what they have, what they are, the far they have gone is by the grace of God. And so we who are here and listening to this, the Lord is uh, calling us to come back to our senses. He's calling at us to a place where we need to acknowledge that, um, that he's the source of our life, where we need to acknowledge and realize that what we are, where we are, who we are, what we have, all that comes from God. And so the Lord is calling on humble people. He's calling us to go back to a place of the cross, a place of repentance, a place of realizing that without God, we cannot be what we are today. We have seen an example of people who are of a church because Paul is writing to Timothy who is a teacher or a leader or a pastor of a church. And so Paul, as Paul writes this, he's describing people who are meant, you know, this example, the, the characters, the, the things that Paul writes in those verses are things that are found in men and women who are meant to be our children of God. And so uh, today's topic, like I said in the morning, is, I mean, as we began, is that is lack of impact. So those kind of people can never have an impact in the kingdom of God because there is no way uh, we will serve ourselves and be full of ourselves and be so proud of ourselves. And at the same place, at the same time, please God, that, that cannot happen because, you know, God says again and again, that he is a jealous God, that we need to acknowledge him as the source of everything uh, that we have, that we need to be humble. You know, one of the themes that we see throughout the Gospels is that Jesus was uh, a humble person. We see the theme of all through uh, the life of Jesus, the stories about Jesus. We see humility. We see uh, a theme of servanthood. We see uh, a theme of, um, you know, a, a a lesson. We learn lessons of uh, Jesus who, even though he is God, even though he was God, even when he was living in this world, he acknowledged God as, as the Father. And so he submitted fully. And so the Lord is calling us to submit to him. He's calling us back to his kingdom. He's calling us to a place of repentance. Because one thing that you realize with this kind of people is that they can never have a good relationship uh, with uh, him and with other people. There is no way that a greedy person will have a good relationship with other people because, uh, you know, that spirit of greed makes them to take everything and forget there are other people who exist. And so the Lord would want to tell us, or I mean, the Lord is calling us to a place of um, surrendering totally to him because our life, you know, he is at the beginning there was word, and the word was God, and he would want, uh, because he's, he is, he was, and he will be, he would want to be uh, the source of our lives. He would want to provide, he would want us to let go and allow him to take full control of us. And so he's calling us to repent, he's calling us to humble and submit to him, he's calling us to surrender totally to him and allow him to be the Lord of our Savior. And so may the Lord bring us to that place of repenting. Let's pray together. And so loving Father, this morning we are, this day, this evening, we are before you with thanksgiving in our hearts. Would you, loving Father, speak to us? Would you, Heavenly Father, break us and mold us? Would you continue to teach us your word and even your knowledge? And so, loving Father, we worship you, we praise you for who we are. We thank you for those who are saved. We pray that you continue to strengthen them. And we pray for many others who do not know you as their Lord and Savior, who have never accepted you as their Lord and Savior. Would you open their hearts and cause them to repent and accept you to be their Lord and Savior. And if you are, you are there and you're willing to submit to the Lord and accept him to be your uh, to be your Lord and Savior, repeat this after me. Dear Lord, I come before you. Would you uh, forgive me and cleanse me that I may be worthy before you. 
Lord, uh, make me a new person in Jesus' name. And so, loving Father, we worship you, we praise you, we surrender ourselves to you, we surrender everybody who is, as a, uh, who is under the sound of my voice to you. Lord, we pray that uh, you would uh, uh, attend to every issue of, of their life, hear their prayers, attend to their needs. Loving Father, minister to their families, minister to every issue over their lives, and be there for them. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and scatter every darkness from before your path. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, you can always get in touch with us, and we will walk with you this journey of faith. Amen.